Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back to Vacation Bible School. We're going to look at our Bible friends, our animal friends that have been with us all week, and just review for a few minutes all of our stories. So remember our friend Chewy? He's a kinkachu. And so our place is decorated to look like Kinkachu Cove. And Chewy has lots of friends. In this cove, it's almost like a tropical rainforest. He has Ruby the parrot, and we talked about Pogo the frog, and we talked about Wilder the monkey. And today we have a butterfly, and her name is Grace. And if you look around, we see all kinds of butterflies that are with us in our lesson today. We are talking about how treasured we are to God and how treasured we are in relation to what God does for us. So in the very first day, we talked about David. And David was chosen to be king because God knew David. All the other people thought that, nah, David's not going to be king. But they were wrong because God knew that David would make a good king. On the second day, when David had troubles in his life, he would pray to God. So God would hear David, just like God hears us. Then yesterday's lesson, we had all of those difficult names. We had King Hezekiah. We had the Israelites. We had the Assyrians who were the enemies. And in all of that, we learned that God can comfort us. So when the Israelites were afraid and they were behind the wall in Jerusalem, Hezekiah went to God and God gave them comfort and in the end saved the Israelites from the Assyrians. Now today we are going to be talking about how God forgives us. But before we start with our Bible story, we're going to sing our treasured song. I'll go over the words another time, and you can then sing it with us. We are looking for a treasure, just like you're looking for something. Can you help us find it? Is it over here? Is it over there? Wait, it's you and me. God says we're a treasure. So here we go, boys and girls. Let's sing it together. Ready? We are looking for a treasure. Can you help us find it? Is it over here? Is it over there? Wait, it's you and me. God says we're a treasure. So just like every time you look at that treasure box that you've made and you're keeping all of your animal friends in there, remember that the most important treasure to God is you. Now, today's Bible story talks about a man named Peter. It's a lot easier to say than Hezekiah, isn't it? And Peter was one of the special friends of Jesus. Jesus had 12 special friends that we call disciples. But Peter was almost a special, special friend. And Jesus loved all of his special friends. God loved Jesus so much that God sent Jesus to earth to help us and to help his special friends. And when Jesus lived on earth, he spent lots and lots of time with his disciples. He wanted to go about the earth telling people all about God and all about God's love. Jesus helped the sick, he helped the sad, and he helped people that were lonely. And lots of people really wanted to be with Jesus and follow him. So the Bible is just full of those stories. But today we're going to talk about a story with his special friend, Peter. And Peter was with Jesus a lot. He helped when Jesus healed a blind man that he could see, and Peter was there. Peter was there when Jesus helped the lame man learn to walk again. So a lot of people think that Jesus was Peter's best friend. And Peter knew that Jesus was his best friend. But boys and girls, unfortunately, there were people who didn't like Jesus. And they didn't really believe that Jesus was God's son. They thought that Jesus was a liar. It's not such a good thing. And they wanted to stop Jesus from saying that. 
he was God's son. So one night, people came to arrest Jesus. And Peter wanted to see what was going to happen, so he followed Jesus and the soldiers. But Peter started getting afraid of all the soldiers, so he tried to follow them real quietly. The soldiers came and got Jesus, and they took him inside the building. And Peter wanted to get inside to see what was happening, but there was this woman at the gate, and she said, whoa, are you a friend of this man, Jesus? Now, Peter was a friend of Jesus, but Peter was so afraid, he said, nope, I'm not a friend of Jesus. Oh, Peter had just told a lie, didn't he? So as the evening went on, Jesus was inside the building, and there were people outside the building around the fire, and it was getting cold, and it was getting chilly. So Peter goes up to the fire with the other people to keep warm. And while Peter's standing by the fire, some of the people standing there kept looking at him. And it made Peter a little nervous. Actually, it made Peter a lot nervous. And so finally, someone at the fire said, are you a friend of Jesus? And Peter was so scared. He said, nope, I'm not a friend of Jesus. Uh-oh. That's lie number two. Well, the people around Peter didn't believe he was telling the truth. In fact, one said to him, I saw you with that man. But Peter lied again and said, nope, I don't know who he is. I really don't know Jesus. And then Peter was so afraid, he ran away. And after he ran away from the people, he started to cry. Peter was sad because he had told a lie about his best friend, Jesus. He hadn't been a very good friend to Jesus. And the next morning, Jesus was killed by the soldiers. Peter felt so sad. He was so sad. He was sad that he could never go back and tell Jesus that he didn't mean to lie and that he really was his best friend. Well, there is a happy ending to the story, though, because after three days, some of Jesus' other friends went to the cave, went to the tomb where Jesus was buried, but he wasn't there. And they ran to the disciples and said, his body is gone. And they told Peter that they had really seen Jesus alive and he was walking around. Well, Peter could believe, couldn't believe it because no way. He knew Jesus had died. He just couldn't be walking around. They must have just dreamed it or just imagined it. So Peter ran to the tomb himself, and sure enough, Jesus' body wasn't there. Now, it was a few days later when Peter and a few of the other disciples, Jesus' friends, decided to go fishing. They were on a boat, and they threw their nets out into the water, and they dragged them back and forth and back and forth. In fact, all night long, they did this and they did not catch any fish. Well, oh, that wouldn't be very good. But in the morning, Jesus came and he stood on the shore. He stood on the beach. And when Peter looked and he saw this man and he saw it was Jesus, he jumped out of the boat and he swam the whole way to shore. He was so excited to see his friend Jesus, and they decided to go for a walk. So as they were walking, Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, you know I do. And again, Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? And again, Peter said, yes, you know I do. Now, Peter had lied three times about being Jesus' friend. Jesus gave Peter three chances to tell the truth. So the third time Jeter, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Jesus, you know everything and you know I love you. Oh my, I'm sure Peter felt so much better 
that he could tell Jesus the truth. Jesus hadn't made any wrong choices. He didn't deserve to die on the cross. But Jesus took the punishment for everyone else's wrong choices. We call those wrong choices sins. That's why Jesus died. And because Jesus took the punishment for my wrong choices, for your wrong choices, for everyone's wrong choices, we are forgiven if we believe in him. That means God doesn't think about our wrong choices. Jesus was sad that Peter chose to lie about being his friend. But Jesus died for that wrong choice too. God forgave Peter for all his wrong choices. And when you and I make wrong choices, God forgives us too. But we have to ask him. So we can be God's friends forever. Now, today our butterfly has a sort of special name. Her name is Grace. And we have graces here and graces there. And that's what God gives to us, grace. Grace means that you forgive someone even though they may have wronged you or have done something wrong. Forgiving isn't easy, boys and girls. And when we have trouble forgiving, we have to pray to God that he can help us forgive. So you will hear a lot of times people talk about having grace. Grace is being a big enough person that you're willing to accept someone saying that I'm sorry and that you're sorry so that you can be forgiven. So of all the animals that are friends with Kinkachu, I can always remember the butterfly's name. And when you think about a butterfly, how it starts out as a caterpillar and the grace that it has when it becomes a butterfly and how graceful it can fly and sit on the plants and eat the, the pollen and just, just be a wonderful addition to God's creation. So hopefully you made your butterfly yesterday. If you did it, you can make your butterfly today. And if you don't want to call the butterfly grace, that's fine. Today, we have a rain stick that you can make. Now, the rain stick, many, many years ago, when people might have lived in the time that built all of these temples, they believed that if they would pray, God would send them rain. And so when you make this, if you're real quiet, you can hear the gentle rain fall. And Miss Donna has all your supplies ready. She has this and she has some tape that you can wrap around and markers that you can draw butterflies or flowers. And then the green paper, you can wrap on the end and tape it with the tape that you have. Now, don't forget, before you put the tape on both ends, you have to put some things inside. She has these rolls of aluminum foil. You can stick one inside and then stick the other one inside. And then she has some tiny little stones to put in. So when you make your rain stick, it's falling like gentle rain. We hope you had a good time today in Vacation Bible School and that you're listening to all the other things that Jonas has for you. Thank you. Goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow.